Welcome to our webinar, where we will discuss customer experience trends, contact center best practices, and uh, customer service. My name is uh, Vitaly, and I'm responsible for projects and products at CloudFresh. Today, uh, I have a modest role. Uh, I'm the host of this webinar, and I'm responsible for ensuring that you, dear guests, and our speakers enjoy this event and that uh, we all feel comfortable and interesting. Now, uh, let me introduce our speaker, speakers. Uh, Guchlu Bilgi, Enterprise Account Executive at Zendesk. Zendesk is a platform that is a leader in customer service and support. Zendesk provides a complete uh, customer service solution that is easy to use and scales with business needs. Guchlu uh, will tell us about the future of customer experience in the short and long run. Sounds is inspiring. Uh, let's see what awaits us uh, in the future. Hi, Guchlu. I'm glad to see you. Yeah, hi. Hi to all. I'm welcome. And I, I'm so excited to be presenting about the trends. And yeah, can't wait for it. Great. Uh, next speaker uh, will be Yannick Debour, Operations Manager at Product uh, product Pine, uh, e-commerce platform with a unique offer uh, for customers. Uh, in addition, the company is actively working on projects to reduce CO2 uh, emissions. Great deal. Yannick will uh, talk about his experience of building CX uh, in his company. I'm really looking forward to, to this part of our webinar. It's always interesting to listen about real cases. Hello, Yannick. I'm happy that uh, you're with us today. Hello, thank you for having me, and I'm excited to be speaking here. And uh, in the last part of our webinar, Vita Usatyuk, uh, Customer Experience Manager at CloudFresh, will uh, show us the Zendesk solution demo. Uh, let's see what uh, customer service experience can be. Uh, Vita, always happy to work with you. Say hello to our guests. Yeah, hi for everyone. Nice to see you today. Uh, Great. Uh, also, <clears throat> before we start, I want to let you know that we have a special offer for the most active of you. The first 20 guests who send a request to our mail, hi at uh, cloudfresh.com, or fill out the form via QR code, uh, which you see on, uh, on my slide, uh, we give three hours of Zendesk professional services from our experts and three months of free use of Telegramio, uh, our Zendesk support uh, integration with Telegram. I will put uh, this email in our chat uh, and you can send the request uh, during the webinar. But now you can um, you can read the uh, QR code from your smartphones and uh, fill out the form. It's e easy way and digital way. Um, okay, also uh, be active in our chat ask questions to our speakers, and we will uh, definitely answer them. It seems that uh, we discussed all organizational things. Uh, now uh, let's uh, get to the point. But before giving the floor to our speakers, I want to tell you about our company. Only two minutes, uh, not more. CloudFresh is an international IT service company with uh, years of experience and expertise in digital business transformation. Trusted by over 1,000 uh, customers in 40 uh, countries. We partner is leading, uh, with leading uh, digital solution vendors in the market such as Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, and GitLab. We uh, resell these products and provide a wide range of professional services uh, uh, around them, such as implementation, integration, development, support, education, and audit and consulting. Uh, companies uh, trust us and uh, we justify this trust. Now I want to give uh, the floor to our first speaker, Guchlu Bilgi with a presentation, Five Big Bets for the Future of CX. Please, uh, Guchlu, share your file, your presentation, and tell us about yeah. uh, your Thank file. you. Thank you, Vitaly. I'm just starting the share. 
and I think you can see my screen now. Yes, we see it. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And hi again, everyone. My name is Gucci Lubergi. I'm an account executive for Zendesk. I try to help my clients to get better at CX and get ready for the future while increasing customer satisfaction and at the same time, most hopefully decreasing their costs and agent satisfaction as well. So as Zendesk, we are so much into customer service and customer experience and we are working a lot to better understand the industry and have some predictions. And today I would like to mention about five big trends we see that will change the future and that will be really important uh, for customer experience. But when I'm telling that, I will use a different like methodology. It won't be only like feature will be like this, but I will put some things about near future and the little bit longer term feature because some of the changes are already happening and sometimes we expect that in the short term there will be lots of changes and we underestimate what will happen in the longer future but usually it works the other way around that's why i would like to mention in two dimensions there so the first big bet and the big trend we see is the conversational crm which is already a part of our discussions today by the way but it's becoming much and much more important uh, in the near future and in the like the longer term, like by 2030, it's that what we think is like every business will live in uh, some kind of conversational uh, support and CRM. And what it means is that actually it means that the customer interaction is will not only be like a one way step that the customers will come, they will request something and we reply, but it's rather than it will be like an ongoing conversation as if that brand is living with the customer when the interaction supports and the customer can ask for anything and through any channel and they can get the replies through any other different channel as well. And you can just think it out like how it runs today. So the messaging has already changed and mainly the channels and the ways of integrations of customers with us uh, has changed a lot. So it can start in a like a Facebook conversation and it can go on via email at the end. It can end with a, like a telephone call and it's all like a conversation. And in the past or when we think about some kind of like chat solutions, it's like it's only a session based thing. So the customer comes, asks the questions, get the answers or not, and then it's done and the uh, session is closed. But what happens today is, is usually it's like an ongoing process that the agent is helping the customer and the conversation goes on. So maybe in the future when the customer visits the website or the chat or the like the medium there, it's again the same info which can be reached out and that feels the customer that the brand is caring for them and the brand knows who they are. That's really important. And we are already like starting these like uh, solutions with our customers like Four Seasons or Logitech and it's doing really, really good. And on the other hand, it's not only, it cannot not only be maybe minimized to support or some kind of like solving the support issues, but this kind of messaging experience actually opens the door for a richer conversation, which means that we can like suggest some of our products or enable the customer to make a reservation, or maybe if they wonder about their loyalty points or if we want to do some kind of proactively uh, informing them about loyalty, we can all do in the same messaging experience. So as the experience gets richer, there are the possibilities of the things that we can offer to our customers increases. And this will be much more frequent in the future so that maybe we can just do lots of things, lots of things with a brand in the in a chat window while we see it as a chat window but it will be connected into different channels uh to the brand's own system and it's like again so for example even today sometimes when we want to get need support or we need to just talk with that brand we search the support part we search the contact us form and other things on the screen but in the future it will be like an embedded experience so it won't be the customer searching to reach out, but it can be anywhere so that you will never for uh, search for support again. 
And the second big bet is, of course, this is one of the like most important trends is the like AI. And again, currently, even today, there are lots of things being done with AI. And in the future, what we think that the AI will replace 75% uh, of frontline customer interactions. And that's really a big number. And today, when we think about AI, so there are, so it's like a development as it develops and gets better and better each day. And it's still clearly maybe not perfect, but the progress is some kind of like increasing exponentially, which means that so today there are like AI applications that can diagnose some of the illnesses or just uh, make better decisions for doc better than doctors for like some uh, issues or some like diagnosis, or we know the self-driving cars. It's not perfect. It's not like a hundred percent faith proof, but it's getting much and much better. And also it's now in the CX world, it works particularly well in automation and recommendation and prediction. So it works really well, for example, for deflecting tickets. But at the same time, what we see is that in the current uh, picture, it's more like reactive means that we can just use it when we have a request, we can automate it. We can do recommendations and pred uh, predictions in the reporting part, and it can help us to better understand our customers. But in the future, what we think that this AI will expand into proactive part, both for the brand and the customer, and there will be the preventative part, so that it won't be only like limited to reactive activities, but it can be like from like being proactive before something is happening, we can we will be able to identify the trends and maybe automatically get in touch with our customers so that it will be before any kind of issue or case or request arouses, uh, we will be there just dealing with it. And when we talk about like AI, it's not only the customer service. As we can see, there are now automated delivery processes for some brands. And what we think that, and because of the effects of the great resignation and as the developments of AI, in the near future or by 2030, uh, most of the tests will be replaced by AI. And the third big one is the actual the customer journey. So the customer service will be driven by the customers only. And there will be hyper-specialized support and it will be available for everything, but of course with a price. So when we think about like near past or today, it's like there are like scripts that we follow when a customer try to engage with us. The customer should follow a way and we need to just go through one way of interaction. Maybe it's through one script and other things. So it's like more defined by the brand than the customer. But what's happening today is the power has shifted and the companies now use CX to differentiate and customer expect to be in control. It's not something that the customer should walk by step by step, but they can decide on what to get and they have different expectations of customer service. And the brands get used to that and they adopt in a way that they will have like different kind of flows for different customer for different requests and it's already displayed in front of the agent so they don't need to go through some certain process and the customer request if the customer request is out of that like workflow they won't be like waiting to get some kind of answers or find something it's already mapped in front of them so they will be able to help the customer in the best way and in the future, most probably today, so that you can get some kind of service for even breaking up with your girlfriend or boyfriend, but that hyper-specialized support will be available for everything. So it won't be some kind of support processes that you will define only. So it can be maybe any kind of different support, which can be uh, offered instantly to the customer in any kind of channel. So this is where the customer journey is going. And the fourth big bet is about data. So data is something we are talking for like maybe uh, four or five years and 
it will will definitely talk it maybe for many longer years but the thing is now today we have too many data and it's not about having all of them but it's knowing what to do with that data but what we also see what we think that we are having a, like a golden era for the data but as the gdpr comes and there are some there will be some restrictions the data will be much more important and it will be much more harder to get that data so the insights will play a different role so in the past maybe we were just struggling to get the data now we don't know what to do with it or maybe we do something but there are like different dimensions of insights that we can use this data for and we see it like a sisyphean task as sisyphus was trying to carry a rock to the top of the mountain but every time he carries it goes back down and he would work up until forever in the greek mythology but it's like this trying to getting the data thing is a similar thing so there is no end to that because huge amounts of data is being created but what we try to do is to find the ways to better understand that data and turn it into like the more valuable insights so if we can do that and if we can get the right insights from the right data at the right time we can give each customer a truly personalized experience and that will create much more like customer and brand loyalty and it will of course increase our like mps scores and it will be uh, it will reflect itself like returning customers and increasing revenue from them and of course help customers and data will be really important so today when we think about that so we can have a like a certain set of data and just we can apply that to our customers and we can find in insights but it's that data can change time to time and we need to put some kind of other dimension other than that we won't know who we are just actually interacting with and we won't be there with like personalized suggestions or personalized support and the other thing is the data notion is changing as i mentioned now gdpr is in our life and there will be most probably much more restrictions about data privacy and we will need to find different ways to get the permission to collect the data and most probably the amount of data will be much more less than today when we compare the future, what we can get a uh, different kind of data from future. So it will be really important and we need to get ready for this notion because it will require lots of like legal approvals and other things. And we need to get systems that can be easily adapted to these changes. When some change comes, we need to be really fast to design our systems and get that consent from our current customers and the fifth big bet is also a really really more important topic today as well is the like the ability to compose the codes like uh, item by item and using low code and trying to build like platforms or applications really easily so it will be also easier for us to design a customer journey in the way that we want and we won't be spending so much money on development and maintenance costs and what we think in the near future what will happen is any development work you need most probably you'll be able to do it yourself you won't need any kind of development or any longer uh, term of project plan so what we see today is like the developers are short in supply and they are the most important and precious resource for innovation uh, but in the future what we think this as the low code and no code technologies gets much more better it will be much easier for us maybe like the users to develop some technologies and developers most probably will be like advisors and innovators be guiding the like the organizations to do different kind of things and use this low code or no code te technologies. So it will be much easier for us to design different kind of customer experience and customer journeys by ourselves. And the reuse of these kind of codes and composability is really important. And so that we can just have some built-in solutions and then we can use those parts like uh, Lego bricks to get together and change the customer journey or any kind of solution that we offer that will be really 
important and that will make things much more accessible and easier for us in the near future. And we will see that the citizen developers will at least now maybe like four times more than the number of the professional developers and this will change and that will be maybe the most important skills of the future as well maybe together with data and to summarize actually as i mentioned we we expect to see much more changes in the conversion conversational crm in ai in how the customer journey is managed so the customers will have much more power what we think but we need to be like focus much more customer intelligence rather than collecting data it will be important to understanding that data and personalizing that data and at the end of the day there will be platforms but it will be really easy for the users to design and create different kind of use cases and workflows and applications for their customers so most probably we we'll expect much more a colorful feature uh, by means of customer experience and there will be different applications for that and that's all for my presentation i'm just stopping to share now thank you thank you guchlu for such uh, inspiring presentation uh, now we know what zendesk will be like in a few years uh, in, in fact, uh, all five bets are very good and very important. And uh, 2025 is close, and uh, we already see the work of vendors in these areas. Personally, I like uh, the fifth uh, bet, uh, no code and uh, low code. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to be able to build processes and customer journey on your own, uh, integrate the platform with other, other IT solution, yeah? Uh, without involving uh, vendor or third-party developers or which... maybe involving them as advisors not the like the workers to do that yeah but yeah. to give the like the vision and the innovation there and it's much more efficient of course and uh, uh, it will help implement improvements improvements faster for for businesses Definitely. and uh, what is uh, the most valuable bet for you Guchlu. Of course, all five were important, but maybe yes. you can highlight one your favorite. Maybe I can. What I think about it is maybe I can group them into two because they converge into two areas. One is the like the data and low code because they are like skills of the future. Those will be the skills that everyone maybe need to have some at some point. We need to be able to maybe make some kind of data set more mean, meaningful by using low code or no code tools it's not only development but it will also help us to understand data that's one kind of technology part and the second part is i think how we interact with customers so it's from the past to the future it's always the customer is the king we know this but now i think we need to show that and that's the customers are much more as our attention spans are getting like lower and lower it's same with the i think with customer loyalty as well they would like to see more personalized solutions for them and they would like to engage through any channel and they would like to get the replies or the they want to leave their own customer experience dream so it's not one size fits all but uh, the systems and the solutions that we need to offer should be easily configured while in the run maybe while we are having that interaction every customer will have a different story with your brand when they're interacting with it. I think that's why I cannot divide them into like five and select one, but I think these two will be the most important parts. Yeah, thank you for the answer. Uh, totally agree with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Guchlu. Uh, let's move on. Uh, I uh, would like to give the floor to our next speaker, Yannick Denbur. Yannick, please tell us about your company and your case. All right, let me load up the presentation. All right, so hello, everybody. Um, my name is Yannick Dembor. I'm the operations manager at Product Pine. Uh, we're an Amsterdam-based startup, and we're, a, uh, we're an online marketplace. So first off, I'll explain a little bit what we do and who we are. Um, so we're a direct-to-consumer marketplace. Um, we have a goal, which is to turn shopping into do-good shopping. 
Um, basically, what this means is that we, we work with companies that directly ship products to customers, um, and we have a vision to do this in a sustainable fashion. I'll speak a bit more on that a bit later. Um, we started in 2019. Um, we started with a, uh, with a store and also an online marketplace. And then, of course, the magic happened. COVID hit. Um, and we more and more started focusing on the online sales since retail was pretty much closed in the Netherlands um, and the people coming in the stores decreased dramatically. Um, then the, the big change this year was uh, around the summer. So we launched a new model, uh, which made it so that companies can join us and sell things for free. Um, and this is basically when we started to understand that we're really going to be scaling up quickly and that we needed to prepare for the future. And then our, our motto or slogan is a best price, better world. So we always try to offer the best prices for customers on our platform. And we also offset the CO2 emissions of every purchase. And this is done free of charge. So customers themselves, they don't have to pay anything extra to have their, uh, their purchase, their purchases CO2 compensated. So next, a little bit more. Um, so how does our platform work? So we're unique in several ways. Number one is that sellers don't compete against each other. So if you look at, for example, Amazon, you will have a lot of different companies selling the same products. So we don't do that. We only have unique products. Um, so every product can only be sold by, by one person. And this way there's less competition between sellers. And we also have more of a focus on, on the brand. So less on products. We try to, to show showcase the brand, what they do, their videos. If they're sustainable, we show that to the customers as well. Uh, so we try to put a focus on that. We also don't have any uh, advertising. So on Amazon, for example, people compete against each other. They basically pay Amazon uh, ad fees to be able to advertise on their platform to get more sales. So we don't have that either. Uh, next, we also have a physical store. So as I explained at the beginning, it started with uh, the focus was mainly on the store. Um, but then we realized that uh, with, with COVID, with the pandemic, um, that wasn't the most practical way to go about. So now we still focus on the store. Um, but mainly on the discovery, innovation, and teaching people about products. So we don't focus too much on selling. Um, in that sense, our store is quite unique. Um, it's also very interesting. We have uh, more of an, an, um, an experience approach. So people, they don't just see a bunch of products lying everywhere. They have uh, individual explanations about every product. There's a tablet. They can scroll through it. They can see information, prices, specifications, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then a bit more about our business model. So how do we work? How do we make money? Uh, quite simply, we make um, a margin on every sale. And we also have an attribution model. And that's where it becomes uh, quite unique uh, in the sense that um, we track conversions, advertisement conversions. And depending on that, brands, um, brands they're enrolled in the program. And then they also get to see which ads they came in through. And then they also pay a fee based on that. Um, and then the second number three, sorry about that, number four, um, is that every purchase is uh, compensated by the seller. So the brands that we work with, they, they pretty much pay, um, they pay us through a partnership that we have with a company called South Pole, and we compensate every purchase, every the CO2 of every purchase. So it's calculated by the type of product, where it's shipped from, uh, where it's manufactured, the size, weight, et cetera, a lot of different variables. And based on that, a, um, a, a CO2 consumption comes out, and then we compensate that. So customers also, they get to see this. Um, we also try to explain what they're helping to um, helping to compensate. Um, and there's an important factor there that we don't just plant trees. So something we see a lot is that companies, they try to compensate by planting trees. And while, of course, that's a great thing, we want it to go a little bit further. So we also actually invest into projects which are related to our industry. So for example, um, in, in the consumer electronics, there's a lot of chips that are used. There's a lot of plastics that are used. These are built in factories, which have very high consumption very often. So we invest in projects to make more uh, sustainable factories, for example. Next up, it's a little bit more about the, the, the Zendesk side. So why did we decide that we needed to, uh, to work um, yeah, with Zendesk? We needed a new tool. So basically, uh, the number one is that we were scaling up. So we wanted to be able to help a lot more, a lot more customers without needing uh, the same amount of extra people. So we wanted to find a, a solution that we can scale with, and that we can also better help our customers with. So then the second point, which for us, of course, is super important, is to keep the service amazing. So we want to help as many customers as possible, which is a lot more than we had in the past and will be more in the future. But we don't want to sacrifice our quality. 
So we want to make sure that we uh, answer and respond and help them in the best way possible so that they basically don't see that we have a huge growth. They shouldn't have any impact that, about that at all. And then also, which was important for us is to have a, a knowledge base, a help center for our uh, business customers. Um, because yeah, our business is split into two sides. We have the, the consumers and then we also have businesses that we work with. So we also wanted to make to make it so that we don't need to respond to individual calls or emails. We want to make it as easy as possible for them so they can find all of the information uh, to basically yeah, reduce the load on our resources. Then, so why did we choose Zendesk? Um, it came down to mainly three factors. Uh, the number one was what we like to use a lot is don't reinvent the wheel. So we looked at partners that we worked with. We looked at, um, of course, researching the industry, researching different companies, businesses that are similar to us. And then we realized that Zendesk offers uh, offers everything that we need. Um, we know people that use it. We know that it's successful. We know that they like it. So that was already a big, a big pro for us. Um, then second, does not does it not only offer what we need, but does it offer it for the future? So is it scalable? Um, with us often in decisions, we're, we're still a startup. We're a relatively small company. So we don't make decisions about uh, 20, uh, 10, 15 years from now with these kinds of things. We decided, well, is it going to work for the next two, at least two years? Will it help us in this period of high growth? And the answer was yes. Then th uh, third of all was mainly about the, the pricing and the network of partners that, um, that Zendesk has. So this is some something which for us made it a lot simpler. Um, we noticed that there's a lot of platforms which are also interesting, but they have often variable pricing, um, which can be useful. But for us at this stage, it's not very, uh, it's kind of difficult to work with variable pricing, which are based on number of conversations, for example, or number of tickets, because we can have very high growth and we need to be able to budget things, of course. Um, and yeah, and then second, second part there is also the network of partners. So are there a lot of companies that can help us with implementing Zendesk? Are there companies that can offer us support with Zendesk? So those were the, the main three reasons that we chose Zendesk. And the next a little bit about how we use Zendesk. Um, so for us, it was really, really a big shift in the way that we do things. It was a complete change in the way of working. Um, because now with Zendesk, we manage all of our socials in one place. So we use WhatsApp, it's used heavily in the Netherlands, in Belgium as well. Um, we have our Facebook Messenger, we have our Instagram, emails, and we can now manage all of this in one place instead of having a bunch of different platforms and uh, different software packages, which we manage individually. We can now pretty much yeah, track everything, um, sort of similar to what, what Guchlu said before about the conversations um, that we noticed that yeah, people, they will send us a WhatsApp and then maybe they'll email when they're back at home, but we can now track those things easier instead of seeing everything as an individual ticket, we can sort of merge things together and keep a conversation in one place. Um, it's of course still a little bit difficult for us to, to measure certain things um, because we only started using the platform quite recently and we've experienced very high growth. Um, so a little example in the bottom, you can see a graph of the number of tickets that we had. As you can see, it started growing uh, a lot, especially during the periods of Black Friday. But overall, we're seeing a yeah, very, uh, very large growth. So it's a little bit difficult to measure impact in certain places. Um, we also use Zendesk with two brands. So that means that we have uh, one side which manages uh, all of the customers, so people that purchase or want to purchase things through our platform. And we then have a separate department which handles the businesses that we work with. Um, we also have a help center. So we have a help center where businesses can uh, can go and find mostly all of the answers to questions they have. We uh, we added videos there. We added uh, a lot of articles, and we pretty and also um, we have a like a chatbot which recommends uh, articles to to uh, to brands. And this way, it's pretty much self serve. So that's how we want to be. We want brands. We want to be transparent. We want brands to be able to go on uh, to our help center and find all the information that they may need. Um, and the next, also something which for us is super useful, is a uh, Shopify integration. So we use Shopify as our order management system. So this is where we can track uh, who bought what. And we also have that integrated in our in our Zendesk. So whenever a customer um, asks simple questions such as, where is my package? Um, or how can I return this? We can easily find out which um, what they ordered, what their order number was, et cetera, et cetera. The next little bit about the impact. So what have we noticed so far in this uh, relatively short period of time? Well, we noticed that we definitely have um, increased efficiency. So we're able to organize tickets a lot better. 
uh, we have all of the customers um, in one place. So we don't need to use um, WhatsApp separately and then also respond on Outlook via email. We can all do that together now in a more uh, in a lot better overview. Um, second, it's more professional. So we've pretty much standardized the way of working. Um, it's a lot simpler for our agents and it's also better for the uh, for the customers as everything is very consistent so it's about consistency and we also see that there's more outputs so it's just a lot simpler to respond to tickets to solve tickets to um to ask a question to somebody while linking it in the same ticket so when there's an answer it pops up in the ticket and you can simply answer the customer um just a lot faster a lot simpler and we can we can uh, output higher number of solved tickets um, then third, as I said before, it's a little bit too early to assess it well with uh, with data. That's something that overall we've uh, it's, it's difficult with uh, several of our solutions because we have uh, we've had a lot of high growth, so it's a little bit difficult to measure how did Zendesk actually help us um, because the data is still a bit too too soon for that. And then next, a um, little bit about uh, about our thoughts on Zendesk, and of course why uh, why we chose to work with CloudFresh. Uh, so number one, if you're thinking about using Zendesk, um, it can seem a little bit intimidating. It's a very big platform. There's so many things that you can do, and it can sometimes seem a little bit overwhelming. Um, so it's important to take your time to really think about what you need, um, and yeah, to build a to build a base version, what you can start with. Second of all, alignment. So it's important that people in your business also understand that customer service is it's. it's it's, it's part of your core business. It's super important. It's one of the ways that you express uh, who you are to the outside. It's how you communicate with others, and it's how you will be forming an image in the markets. So it's it's important to yeah make sure that your company understands that there's a transition happening, and that there needs to be enough resources given to it, and that um yeah basically that it's just very important that they need to understand um that they need to all work together to uh, to implement and approve it. Um, next, something which is super nice about Zendesk is that there's so much to learn. There's a lot of uh, knowledge available. There's tons of articles, there's videos, there's forums where you can find information. It's super important to use it. Um, there's not a lot of questions which you may have which have not been asked before or haven't been answered um, in an article by Zendesk. So I really try to use that. Um, the next off is iterating. So this is a little bit of the, the, the agile way of working. So for us, for example, we're a startup. Um, we didn't have a lot of experience with Zendesk. So before trying to do everything perfectly, we decided, okay, we're going to build a base version. We're going to then improve on it. We're going to collect feedback from our agents, but also from the people, um, the, uh, for, from the customer service heads. We're then going to um, write them down and then we're going to iterate. So we're going to build a, a, a version two, for example, then a version three. So always try to, to change with the market, change with um, different tools that are available. Um, so yeah, don't try to do everything at once, except of course, if you're a larger company, then maybe you want to do everything at once, but you should still continue iterating. So it's not a one and done thing. You can always improve and Zendesk can also um, help you improving. Um, and then last, quite importantly, is if you don't have experience, it's worth it to find a partner. Um, so in the beginning, when uh, we were speaking to some, um, to some uh, representatives of Zendesk, they explained to us that we can set it up ourselves. Um, but often, if it's a bit more complex, such as our situation, it's worth the money to simply find a partner uh, that can help you. And in our case, it's definitely been worth it. Um, and in the end, we, we chose to work with CloudFresh. Um, so the way that we worked is that in the beginning, we were looking at different partners we can work with. Uh, we spoke to a lot of different people. Um, something we noticed a lot is that a lot of them have more um, cut and dry sort of templates, which they make, but they didn't actually listen to what we needed because it's a little bit specific for us since we're a marketplace. It's a lot different than simply a web shop because we have a lot more things to, to deal with. Um, so yeah, we decided to work with uh, with CloudFresh. We implemented quite a simple, uh, simple workspace. Uh, so it does everything that we need to do. We wanted to keep it quite simple so that we don't have too many complex things which people will ask questions about in the beginning. Um, as I said, what was super nice and what's important for us as well is to have a partner that listens, that can also teach us. And this is something which is quite unique because a lot of partners, they don't actually teach you how to use Zendesk because they expect that you already know this. But for us, it was quite new. We had never built a complete customer service system. We had done the things before separately, but we didn't know exactly what we wanted. 
and that's where they were able to explain everything. Um, they have always been available, which was super nice. Um, I even worked with Vita in the beginning, and I spammed her quite a bit, but she always answered uh, and always got back to me on time with good answers, which is super nice. Um, so yeah, we're we're quite happy about that. We also had um, sessions where we had trainings for the for the admins, but also for the users, and we were even able to have them recorded so we can reuse that in the future, which is overall just super nice. Um, also, it only took us a couple of weeks, I think two or three weeks. Um, most of the delays were most likely, yeah, they were on my side. Um, but yeah, within within a couple of weeks, we were pretty much 95% done. Um, yeah, I say 95% because there's always 5% of things that you don't know you need or that you have until um, until it's too late. Um, but that's mostly because we didn't have very clear requirements yet. Um, and then, yeah, number four is they understood what we needed and they did it very well. So quite simply, that was that's just the, the best way of working with somebody is that they actually understand your needs. They ask the right questions, the questions that uh, you need to answer, but you don't know that you need to answer. Um, and they, yeah, they got it done uh, very well. Um, and yeah, pretty much what I spoke about before is that they also are one of the few partners that we spoke to that can actually give sort of a session about to teach agents. So we, we were able to uh, have, we were able to use their expertise instead of us trying to learn ourselves and then trying to teach something that we don't know very well to our agents. Uh, so that was also just super nice. Um, yeah, so overall, we're, we're very happy with Zendesk. And we're also very happy that we worked with a partner because otherwise we would have been um, probably working on it for months and months and our customers would have, um, yeah, they would have been the victim of that. That was it um, from my side. Uh, Yannick, thanks for your story and thank you for uh, good words about uh, CloudFresh. We really appreciate it. And you and your company do an excellent job, and I wish you success and a large number of uh, customers. Thank you. And I, I have one question. Uh, what uh, do your contact center agents say? How much easier uh, or more comfortable, efficiently for them to work after switching to Zendesk? And how did they react to these change, changes? Uh, good, good question. Um, I would say it's a little bit mixed in the sense that um, it's a very big change of working. So what we notice is that the employees, uh, is that certain employees were able to transition very well. They understood that it's more beneficial. Um, and then there's some employees that simply take a little bit longer to migrate. So for them, it's a little bit more difficult. And they found, let's say, the older system um, a little bit simpler or easier. Um, but overall, they're positive about it. And the ones that, uh, that work with it a lot, they definitely understand that it's it's a better and something that everybody does understand. So all of the agents, even the ones that may not like the change of way of working, they all do understand that in the that this is what we needed. Um, so yeah, I would say that for sure. And then what we noticed with new employees, so people that weren't used to the old system, the old way of working, they're just super happy about it. So that's that's something that often happens is when you transition. Um, some people they prefer their older way of working. And some people embrace the the change, the innovation, and they they, they go for it, and they understand why why it's good for us. Thank you, thank you, Yannick, for uh, for the answer. It's really important thing that uh, agents to uh, how agents to meet uh, these changes and how, mm -hmm. how involve uh, in these changes and, and then work uh, work with uh, with new solution. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you for your uh, for your speech. It was very interesting and useful, I'm sure. And uh, I propose uh, to move uh, to move on to the final st stage of our webinar, uh, then desk demo session from my colleague Vita. Vita, please, uh, your turn. Yeah, thank you very much. I hope that you see my screen. One second, it's loading. So now we will jump in a demo. Uh, from my side, uh, uh, I have also agenda of this demo. Uh, so we will speak with you about customer and agent workspace. I will pay attention on how it uh, look like from the customer side and how it look like for the agent. Uh, we will use uh, WhatsApp as the, as the example of uh, uh, communication channel. I will also 
shortly show some automatization features which can help your agent view more effectively and how you can collaborate with people from another departments and uh, uh, also um, use this feature as well and i hope that we will have time and i will uh, just shortly show you the analytic tool so let's jump into the conversation as i mentioned i will uh, show it in the example of the whatsapp so let's imagine that i am the a customer and I have some troubles with my order. It was damaged in the transit and I am uh, writing into the customer support. What will see the agent from his side? Uh, so we can see the request of the person. I can see like more information um, about what is the personality of our customer some contact information or additional information you can also add your ticket fields like for example the date of birth or the delivery address or for example some text like this is vip customer and we should solve uh, her or his uh, request as soon as possible uh, we can also, what is important to see all previous uh, conversation with this customer. It's what Guchlu and also Yannick mentioned that in Zendesk you are able to see not only like separately WhatsApp communication, but also the history of all channels uh, and through different channels. So here you can see like my WhatsApp, which I uh, sent request. Here uh, also I can see that this customer wrote us email, wrote in facebook messenger maybe we can uh, this customer also had call conversation so we can listen this call uh, and to understand what was the previous history and our customer uh, don't need like to repeat some uh, questions to the new uh, agent one and one more time so it's very useful from the point of better customer experience for from the point of the agent you are also able to use some automatization features which can help you faster to solve uh, tickets and requests from your customer first of all it's macroses which is like um, uh, quick replies to the customer or faq replies for example i have customer i like uh, macros as greeting english here i can only apply the macro and then all what i need to do is just uh, click enter and my reply will be immediately sent to the customer as you can see from the customer side i already see this request so uh, for example i can um, in this case if my purchase was damaged i can uh, one second maybe send some photos that it was really damaged and i didn't receive it properly in a proper way so i can send like more details and yeah and let's send this damaged stuff and uh from the agent side i can as well receive all this information from our agent just few seconds and yeah and it's appeared uh and uh what else i can do first of all i can use also our knowledge center and help center it's uh, what yannick also mentioned in his uh, demonstration so these help center articles they can be um public so it's mean that uh, our customers can find information as well so as the agent i can just click this link and this link for the article will will be shared with my customer and from the customer side i as the customer can just uh, go uh, by this link and see uh, this information like what i need to do as the customer like with whom connect with uh, at what email and more such details from the agent side uh, i can also like uh, provide the quick reply for um, uh, our customer like with the help of macro for example i can use this reply and explain that we are sorry that such has happened, but we will work uh, uh, with this session and we will try to help you as soon as possible. 
Uh, me as the agent, I can also find here in the help center some private articles where will be described more information about uh, what should I as the agent to do in such situation, with whom I should to communicate. Here you can see that I have a recommendation like please use the macro uh, item have been damaged uh, and internal communication. So I as the agent, I will use this macro and what important you can do here uh, that this macro will not uh, only like uh, provide answer for the customer but it also can um, start uh, internal communication with somebody from your uh, from your department or from your company or it can be even people outside your company like your partners your suppliers uh, some maybe delivery um, companies and so on and what i as the agent uh, can to do and need to do is just clean uh, press the link like to send and it will be sent uh, to my colleagues my colleagues will receive the ordinary email in which they will answer like as the um, only in their email they even don't have uh, need to access to the zendesk and uh, um, all internal communication which we will have it will be here in a one place uh, it's very um, comfortable that uh, all this like external and internal communication it's not silent it's all in a one place and you can use for such side conversation not only email but also slack and as i know also uh, recently zendesk added teams uh, uh, to this conversation so you can uh, send a request to somebody from your colleagues in slack or for example in teams as well so it's a short uh, part of agent and customer conversation from my side. Uh, also, I would like just shortly to show you uh, how uh, business and how managers can see more information about how is our customer service working. It's powerful than desk analytic, where you can find more information about how many tickets we had, how many of them was uh, solved from one touch, uh, how they was created by hours, day, months, uh, what channels was uh, used, um, some additional information from the point of retrospective. We can also see all these uh, most um, um, uh, important metrics as first reply time, full resolution time, group satisfaction, SLAs, so we can see how we are good, where we, uh, our bottlenecks and what we should improve. And also we can see uh, the efficiency of our agents or group of agents, uh, who is working good, who need maybe our help uh, from the management side or work of which should be improved. So all this information uh, available here and what is more uh, important that you can also build your own um, analytic your own dashboards and show information that is important for you and for your business. So uh, one second, let's come back again to my presentation. If to summarize it, uh, what you can achieve with the Zendesk suite, it's firstly you can increase loyalty of your customers, you can provide for them better customer experience to solve their problems or their requests faster and to provide them more personalized uh, experience of conversation with your cost with your help center and with your uh, customer care uh, you can also provide for your agents uh, more comfortable tools uh, for work with which uh, to provide the ability to communicate with people from other departments or other companies and also reduce of stress for your agents as well and for your business you can provide uh, the clear vision of uh, where we are good what we should improve uh, what is our metrics what is our uh, key uh, results of uh, customer support 
And uh, how we as the Cloud Fresh can help you, it's first of all, if you're interested in a Zendesk, we can provide for you personalized demo of Zendesk according to your need and your business processes, because now we just very briefly and very shortly go through it. We can also um, provide for you proof of concept uh, and to help you to test this solution in your real uh, business. Uh, we can provide for you ROI calculation. Uh, we uh, will be glad to share with you our best practices of how to use Zendesk, how to set up it, and how to be the most efficient with it. Um, we uh, will help you quickly and easy to uh, implement Zendesk into your company. We will provide our knowledge uh, to your agents and to your administrators, so you will be after it uh, sure that you can do all by yourself and any changes can be done by you and you know system very good. And uh, if you're already using Zendesk, so we are also helping with better understanding of your Zendesk settings and we are helping to improve it. So to make your experience uh, even uh, more better with the Zendesk and help you to enjoy all new features that Zendesk launch. So that's all from my side. Thanks a lot, Vita, for this demo. It was very useful. Um, indeed, Zendesk has a larger number of integration with various communication channels and other useful so software as, uh, such as uh, Slack or Asana. And it's really powerful tool and uh, this analytics which you uh, showed uh, also uh, very powerful, uh, po powerful part of uh, Zendesk and has a lot of possibility and uh, um, then this const constantly improve uh, existing functionality of this uh, product and other products and adds new functionality. It's like uh, this why I like uh, this software as a service approach because you buy uh, you buy software which always improving and uh, you 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 receive more features, better features. It is like. Uh, uh, continuous process. Yeah, I agree with you, Vitaly. So um, when you buy this like a software as a service solution, you don't need to think about uh, improving of it. You don't need to have a lot of staff of developers alone uh, term of uh, improving uh, like another team doing it instead of you. Yeah, you, you know that uh, when there uh, has a, a strong roadmap which will uh, implement yeah, and develop in future. Uh, okay, uh, dear par participants, dear speakers, dear guests, uh, I guess we covered uh, all uh, questions which we had uh, in chat. We covered in chat. Thank you, Guchlu, for your involvement. Uh, if you will have uh, some uh some additional questions please ask us uh, through email and uh, through uh, chat we will uh, answer uh, them with pleasure uh, i see some comment from rufus but it's not not a question uh okay yeah we Thank you. Have some chat and they answered that and thanks for the questions all of them are so really good questions and valuable. Great. I, I guess it was, uh, I'm sure that uh, our webinar was really uh, useful and uh, uh, important for, for all of us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, dear guests. Thank you, dear speakers. Thank you. Uh, keep in touch and see you soon. Have a great day. Yeah, thank, thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Yeah, take Bye. care. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye.